this, I thought I'd uh, use the mic so I'm able to actually point a little bit at the, uh, at the screen. So my name is Vaughn, I'm the Director of Engineering and Public Works uh, for the City of Parksville. And uh, as was mentioned, um, I'm kind of a lead city uh, engineer in terms of taking care of the new uh, water treatment plant that's being built. We had a nice tour yesterday. Um, uh, had a good turnout for that. I think it was 21 people came out to see that. And uh, we toured the uh, water treatment plant and the uh, the fall um, I will get this thing going. I'm also on the 15 second rule here for slides, so this is going to sound fast, but there will be time for questions. So I'm here to present aspects of the city's uh, balancing act that we've had to um, employ to balance the needs of the community water supply with the needs of the environment. Um, you'll see aspects of that in this uh, presentation. So this is Parksville's vision. In, in there, we talk about it's got to be economically viable and also sustainable uh, in terms of the environment. And our approach is to maintain and enhance the quality of life. Uh, uh, we run the AWS, Aerosmith Water Service, and ERWS. AWS involves the dam as a partnership between Parksville, the RDN, and Qualcomm Beach. ERWS supplements um, the water supply by adding in the treatment plant intake. So this is what the uh, demands were designed to be. We, we took into consideration LCP and the regional growth strategy in, in creating our, uh, our design uh, flows. And that just shows some project projections of the population. This I put forward as, as uh, this is 15 seconds, it's fast, but the demand management that we have to go through in red is a, I'll uh, backspace it here if it goes forward. In red is the, on average, uh, a typical typical demand for, for a year of uh, through the summer in red. In 2015, it was a tough year. We had uh, quite a drought. You can see in blue there, it started to take off really early. And that, that's when we uh, employed uh, a, a watering restrictions level two. We had to go to level three because it wasn't turning around. And when we hit level four, you can see in blue, the usage drops dramatically. We were able to, to successfully uh, negotiate it and get it back to um, where it should be. This is all trying to make sure that we leave enough water in the stream for, for fish habitat. Uh, this just shows you the, uh, the full infrastructure that's involved in AWS, ERWS. There's the Aerosmith Dam up high on, on Aerosmith Mountain, Englishman River. Um, down below here, we've got the treatment plant that we're currently building. The treatment plant that we're currently building. Uh, we've got the uh, reservoirs. Uh, these are our, represent our wells, and here's the demands for uh, domestic water supply, and this is the demands uh, out in Newsom Craig Bay right here. This just gives you a sense of the whole system we're talking about. And as was mentioned by Peter, this represents the uh, catchment, 324 square kilometers for the Englishman River. The dam is, is here. This is the uh, catchment for the dam, but uh, the Englishman River is the conveyance of all that water right down to right down to our intakes, which are down here in the city of Parksville. This represents uh, the dam area. So this would be the time of year uh, in the spring when the, when, the, you know, when the water's full. You can see there's overflow going over the, over the spillway here. Uh, this picture here represents what it would look like uh, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of the season. The water's drawn down as far as it can go behind the dam. This is uh, an interesting slide because in yellow here, we have a gauge in the river that measures the level of, of the Englishman River. Typically, historically, this is what would happen. Uh, they, uh, through, through the summer months, it would, drop to, it would drop to this level here, below 0.6 cubic meters per second. Uh, I've identified here the, the uh, flow targets that we've worked with, uh, with fisheries on as a minimum flows to have in the river. Um, 0.7 represents the critical rearing flow for fish. 1.13 is, is really the target, the preferred rearing flow target in, in the river. And but our operational, provisional operational rule um, indicates that we're we're trying to meet 1.6. We want to we want to leave some buffer there so that we don't impact the fish habitat. So so that's that's the minimum flow that we would want to have in, in the river uh, most of the time if we can we can do it. And you can see in green that's 1.6 there. There's the preferred rainfall flow target, and there's a the critical rainfall flow target. 
This represents um, prior to the dam being built. And this is typically what we would see um, in terms of the, the levels of you know, flow in the river. You can see that critical rearing flow of point, the critical rearing flow of 0.6. At times, we would get below that. After the dam is built, this in green is the levels in the river. Now we're able to be able to negotiate and stay above this, most of the time stay above this 1.6 original operating rule, which is great news for the fish. Uh oh I think you went over, didn't you? <laughs> anyway, you're taking up my time here. So you can see, here's some fish counts. This is Coho salmon, Chinook salmon, and pink salmon counts. 1999 is when the dam was built. These are counts prior to the uh, dam being built. These are and these are counts after the dam is being built. Circled here. You can see the stocks are coming back very, very strongly. This used to be one of the most endangered rivers uh, in BC, and now you can see the the recovery there. Just because of the way we've been managing with the dam, we're able to keep those flows up when when it's needed. This is just a reminder again, this is the full system here. We're talking about the dam, and I want to show you a little bit about the, uh, the treatment plant that's currently, currently being built. So this is the, uh, the dam infrastructure. There's a water treatment plant. And we had a tour of this yesterday, and we, we toured the raw water pumping station. There's also uh, force mains that have been, <laughs> that have been uh, installed. So that's the project. This is the raw water pump station. Down here is the Englishman River, and down the bank would be the uh, the intake, the new intake from the river. That was quick. I'm catching up. There's the a picture of the intake with the fish-friendly screens. Uh, we also we also did enhancements in the river. This is actually a large salmon right here that's using the enhancements that we were able to do in the river. Put some big boulders in there and give them the ability to rest in the river. This is the uh, current. Uh, intake that will be abandoned. We've had to in the past go in actually into the river and we're going in there right now actually uh, to uh, flush out the current the current pipes that are buried under the gravel here. So there's quite a bit of work that we had to um, do in the river and disrupt the river under permit of course but now that the treatment plant, the new treatment plant will allow us not to have to do this. It's all a side and let, uh, side and let uh, for, for the water intake. Okay. This is the uh, new water treatment plant here that's under construction. Here's some components. We use membrane filtration. We use ultraviolet reactors to, to kill any uh, uh, viruses. Um, this is an example of, there's a force main that went through the Englishman River. We had to actually trench right through the river. This is just after it was installed. And now it's, you, can, you can see the recovery here. We've put in uh, a perch here for raptors, and, and we planted there. So, in summary, we've we've had to um, find ways to uh, work with the environment and also balance the, the needs, the demands of, of the public in terms of drinking water. And uh, I, I think it's working out pretty well. We just have to keep on it and make sure that we're able to meet those flows uh, to keep those uh, the fish habitats healthy.